doing and trimming of what's being done to your horse so you can have a better idea if they're being done correctly. Um, it's not that we're pointing our finger at any shoe or farrier because we're trusting them to keep our horses nice and sound. But as a good educated horseman, you kind of need to know what their feet should look, at, look like, what are some kinds of things that um, you should notice, and it might be a new horse that you just got. Um, you know, things that you want to look at. Now, a little bit of this is going to be fairly basic, okay? Kind of starting at the very beginning to walk you through some things. Um, and I don't want to belabor it or, or make you bored, but just a few basic things with um, some of the horse's feet and some of those types of things is remember, and I'll kind of stand over here so I can use my pointer. But if we look at the bottom of the horse's foot here, okay, and this area through here is called the hoof wall, okay, and we have to remember that's the primary weight bearing surface. And some horses are going to have very thin hoof walls, some are going to be um, larger, the wider. This is also the area when your farrier put nails those shoes on, this is the only area that those nails can go in, and I'll have some other diagrams a little bit later. So keeping a good hoof wall really is quite important. Um, your farriers go nuts sometimes for horses that it's very, very thin and they don't really have much to, to nail to and can cause some problems, some headaches to them. Okay, a little bit more of just the anatomy of your horses, the bottom of their foot, if you look. Okay, we've had the hoof wall that goes through here. Then what we call the bars are this area that it's kind of the remains of the hoof wall that come in and turn in. Okay, a part, part that's real important is that we have a lot of width and expansion through the heels here and those bars are going to help with that because as you as I'll show you a diagram in a few minutes the way that a horse's foot works as they walk we want a horse that has good width through his heels and that's going to aid in traction and also pumping, back, pumping of the blood through their foot which is going to really help for soundness of those horses feet over the long time. Okay. Um, then also the inside structure here is what we call the horse's sole. Okay? Um, it's really the non-weight bearing surface. We used to say that we don't even want that to touch the ground. But if you look at the feral horses, they don't have anybody cupping their foot out and that. And so if it's a very fresh, thin sole, if a horse is walking on their sole, they'll get sore. Okay? So you need to watch that. But the sole is this structure here if they step on a rock. If they run a nail into the sole, you'll know it because they're going to be sore. And you need to have immediate tension. For example, I had a horse of my own this summer. And he stepped on a horseshoe nail and ran it through a sole. And he's been about five months still healing up from that because it ran in and it got infected and it was a huge mess. If it had run out here in the white line or in the hoof wall portion, it wouldn't have been a problem. So have to be careful with some of those. And then we have what we call the white line which is the junction between those two structures, okay, the hoof wall um, and the, the horse's sole, these two areas here, and um, that's, they will have some problems occasionally called white line disease where you'll have this area will get broken down, but that's basically the idea of what the white line actually is, okay. One other structure that you'll see on the bottom of their foot, and we'll talk about that, is the frog, okay. This triangular V-shaped structure here is the horse's frog. It's real important. Um, it absorbs the shock moisture it stores, um, it's important for the circulation, the gripping and moving. It's important also to remember that it's kind of an elastic, oh, rubbery kind of structure and they'll shed it twice a year. Um, occasionally you'll see your shoe are cutting it off and don't panic, that's okay because normally they're doing that when the frog's shedding and it's going to come off anyway on its own, okay? So that's, that's okay for, for things like that to do. This I wanted to put on here because I think it's kind of interesting to see. And I'll give you a little bit of um, landmarks here. But to kind of show you what happens each time that horse steps down on each of his four feet. Okay. So if you're looking um, from the back of that horse's foot, okay, this is the horse's hoof wall. This is that white line. And this is actually the sole. Okay. And the frog is here. Okay. These are um, little portions of that horse's um, third phalanx, the coffin bone, okay, in here. The digital cushion is here, and up above the digital cushion is the navicular bone. So to give you an idea of what you're looking at. And really what happens when they step down, okay, um, the, the um, wall is going to bear most of the weight, and it's a really small area that takes most of that weight on that 1,200 to whatever pound horse it is. But what really happens is the bars in the frog um, take a little bit of the weight, and when they step down, the sole is going to flatten and the heel expands. And that's why we want um, those feet with wide heels and a lot of expansion and a lot of um, elasticity in that horse's feet. Okay? Because as they step down, the weight of that step 
compresses um, the digital cushion between the ground and the coffin bone so it comes and it squishes it down more or less and that's what makes the pumping blood for pumping mechanism for that blood to go back from that horse's foot back up through his, his general circulation and keep the health of that foot going good. If you've got a horse that has narrow heels um, or um, is, is real narrow in his heels or contracted in his heels then that whole blood pumping mechanism just doesn't work as good because there's not as much frog pressure on the ground. Okay, so that's a little bit how that whole process is going to work. Okay, moves that blood out of the out of his foot, um, and on back up. And you'll hear people or the old timers say that a horse has five hearts: one in his body cavity and four more in his feet, because it happens to all four feet. Now, about 75% of their weight is on their front feet, so their front feet will tend to be more round um, than the hind foot, and we tend to have more soundness problems with their front feet because they are that bears more weight with just the conformation of the horse. Um, than what the hind feet do does, but the, all the same stuff happens within them. Okay, now to talk about a little bit of conformationally, some things to look at on a horse, and this you can only change so much, and you more or less need to look to see is is he being trimmed and worked on to complement himself as good and make him as good as he can be and as sound and as comfortable as he can be, because you're not going to change some of these types of things if the, if he's on a really good program. But what we want to see is what we call the hoof pastern axis, okay? And balancing a horse's feet is kind of what the, the, the aim of most farriers are now. Instead of trying to make them straight, we want to keep them balanced. Balanced for whatever their conformation is, okay? We can only do a lot of corrective trimming while those horses' legs and bones are still growing. So by the time he's five, if he's crooked, he's going to be crooked, okay? Um, the only time you might help him a little bit is if he's been trimmed improperly, okay? And you try to refix what he is. But just like on the video we showed you, like that one sorrel horse that's kind of pigeon toed, if you ever caught a shot of him coming straight at you, you're only going to help him and try to make him not worse. You're not going to fix him by the time they're the age that they, that they are. But anyway, if we look at the hoof pasture and axis, okay? What we want to see is that a parallel line that runs down through the horse's toe here, through the center of his pasture here, and down through his heel. And all of those lines should be nice and parallel, okay? And we'd like for these lines also to be at the same angle of his shoulder. And that's what we would really like to strive for. Now, occasionally, because a horse has some problems, you might alter that, but that's doing some therapeutic things to help ho a horse in a certain particular situation, a la a horse that's got navicular syndrome that you're trying to, to li lift him up off of his heels. But that's what we generally try to strive for, as you can kind of see here, where we've got the angle of their shoulder and the angle down there through their pasture in the same, and the angles down there here through their feet of the, the same and look to see if they are when you look at them from the, from the side. Okay, so that's the hoof pasture and axis looking if they're balanced from the side. Then we also look at them in front and behind. Okay, so what we want to see is that not only does this line come down fairly straight, okay, but what's really important is that if you go from the coronet band here to the ground, on the inside and the outside, or medial or lateral, if you want to sound like a veterinarian, the inside or the outside, that the distance from the coronet band, the hairline to the ground, is the same, looking both in front and looking both behind, from here to the ground and here to the ground. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and sometimes they will be off, and I think I've got some pictures, just like here, looking, and sometimes you can see it the best when you look at them from behind. Okay? This one is okay. You look from here to here, it's the same, and here to here, it's the same. You look at on this horse, he's much longer here than he is here. Okay, that is more, um, it's not because he's been, you know, shot improperly, it might be because he's grown that way, whatever, this is something that you need to try to fix, okay, that you need to try to watch. Some horses are going to try to do this to you, and if you have to, it's a constant battle to try to keep them balanced, okay. Just example, the one sore horse, um, not the really old one, but the second one that's real quick in front, this is a lot of his problem, and we constantly have to work on his feet to try to make him last as long as what he can, okay? Also, they'll call this at times what we could say a sheared heel where the inside falls off. Um, so on this horse, you need to go to lower an aim so you can bring this line back more perpendicular, okay, and straight, because if you think internal, okay, the bones aren't laying correct for that horse's conformation anymore. He's getting stressed off to one side or the other, okay? This horse will end up having problems, okay? 
he might pop out a quarter crack from up here. Um, he might have pain in the back of his heels because he's not walking flat on his foot. Okay, he's walking cockeyed. Okay, just think if you put a shoe on that's, that's uneven, that's a little bit how he's walking. Okay, all right. Here's some other pictures that I'll show you. This horse is a fairly nice balance when you look at him from the side. These lines are nice and parallel, and you can see this. The foot is underneath him, okay? If you look as it comes down through here, through his ankle, through the bulb of his heel, it's underneath the, beneath him, and he's got some nice heel to him. Okay, here's a couple horses that are a horse that taken a couple different angles. Um, you can see some things that you might like to change, and they're not as balanced. He's a little bit duck-footed, you might say. Um, you can see that this horse's heels are shoved up underneath himself, okay? If you look at the lines, okay, if we look at this line here, this line, and this line, they're not all parallel, okay? You've got a line coming here, this one is close, but the heel is shoved way underneath himself. In contrast, this foot here is closer, okay, is more, is more desirable. He's got this line here, this line, and this line. Um, so this foot has more heel and it's underneath himself a little bit better than what this foot is, is over here. And you can see that from behind, this horse is really walking on his heels, um, walking down where that coronet band's about in the dirt instead of being up and elevated. And left barefoot not taken care of, he's probably going to get on hard ground sore, sore on the back of his foot. Um, and you can do some stuff, and I've got a picture of a horse um, a little bit later that shows you how we did um, fix him a little bit because he was kind of prone to those kind of problems. Okay, so here's just some more. I went around took some pictures of some of our horses to give you some various examples so they're not all diagrams. So we'll look at him. He comes down pretty good here. This side and this side are pretty close, okay? This horse really balance-wise I think looks pretty decent, okay? The lines here, through here, through here, it's got a nice heel to him. This side is a little bit hard to see, okay? Because I didn't, I was off to the side, so I don't think you can really look at this one very good because it, the picture is a little bit distorted, okay? I'm not square from behind. Where this you can see a little bit better, and it might be a little bit off where this side from here might be a little bit longer than um, the outside over here, okay? Just a little bit off on that foot. From the, the, the side view, I think she looks pretty good. And from the front looks pretty good. Just maybe you could help her heels just a bit. Okay, um, what do you think of this horse? One, his feet are long. You can just see there's a lot of length to it. He's not a walking horse. He's not a saddlebred. <laughs> so his feet are a little bit long. And if you look from this side to this side, it's not a huge difference if I put a ruler. This side is a bit longer, okay, than this side, and it'd be even a little bit more pronounced if you saw it from behind, okay, you can see here, and his, his hair is just going to distort the picture a little bit, but he's not completely um, even from side to side, um, not terrible, but just a little bit off, and I don't have one that's really, really bad. Sorry, somebody's doing a pretty decent job. Another one that I thought was really a pretty good horse, okay? Um, this is actually the, the, the um, sore horse with all the white on him that we saw on the tape earlier. But if you look from, from the front, this horse is very well balanced, okay? From here to here to here, okay? He's, he's pretty equal as you go down to the ground. Um, from the side, these parallel lines are pretty good. Sure, he probably has a little bit more angle than the 45 degree, but are his angles through his foot, through his heel, the middle of his, his pasture, and through his toe the same? I'd say, yeah, they probably are, okay? Okay, so kind of moving on with a few other things. Um, mentioned a little bit about the shape of their foot, okay? And remember that your front feet are gonna be more round, your hind feet are going to be a little bit more oval, and that's sure a factor of that most of the weight's going to be on that horse's front feet, okay? Now this is a picture that, yeah, it might look like a hind foot, but this is actually a front foot, and this is one what we have a, a, has some contracted heels on. They're quite a bit more narrow, okay? And it's something that a lot of our horses have that we really need to try to fight and try to get those heels back more expanded like what this horse is. From that sheer overall health of that horse's foot, as they walk, this horse is not going to have near as much expansion of those heels as he walks, okay? In addition, um, that whole pumping mechanism of the blood back through his foot because you can see how much less frog pressure this guy would have compared to this one, 
okay? So over time, there's going to be some differences. And horses like this, okay, unless you do some things to help them, which can be a variety of things, they're going to they're gonna get sore over time. And they could, these kind of horses are going to be more prone to navicular syndrome and various kinds of problems, okay? This kind of horse, um, things that they will do with the shoeing is to expand the things, the various things to expand the heels, leave a little bit of the shoe off to the inside. Sometimes they suggest just leave them barefoot for a while, okay? And some, you can do that with some horses and some horses you take the, the, the shoes off of them and they can't hardly walk. So it, you just have to work with your veterinarian, your farrier, with the best plan for your particular horse to see how you're going to